Hello there, everybody. Dodgy Gamer here, international manager of mystery, managing obscure nations so you don't have to. First of all, a quick apology that it's taken so long to get this next episode out. It's just been life, work, those kind of things keeping me busy. But you're not here for that. You're here for the action with Tanzania. Well, last time out, we got off to a cracking start in this new job with a somewhat unexpected victory of the Sisafa Cup mere months into the job. And we ended the stream with the tease of a World Cup qualifier against Tunisia. That's going to be our featured game today, and damn, it's well worth watching. But before we get into today's World Cup qualifying action, a quick reminder that this is your one-stop shop for all things international management on Football Manager. So if that's your kind of thing, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, get the bell on for notifications so you don't miss any of the international action. So here is the World Cup qualifying table as things stood when I took over and yeah, not a great start at all. But still four games to play and with a squad on a high, from that Sisafa Senior Challenge Cup win. Maybe, just maybe, there was a chance. So here we go, Tanzania Tunisia World Cup qualifier. Playing at home this time, so a big homecoming celebration in front of our own fans after that Sisafa Cup win. They'll probably hate us by the end of this game, but uh, you know, we'll just see how we cope with that. And Tunisia looking too good for us already. That 100 place world ranking difference is going to show itself here, I think. Oh man, we just can't get them off the ball. Okay, it's gone wide. Also, in terms of your own saves, whether it's club or international, what's kind of the biggest David and Goliath matchup you've been involved in? I had one last year managing FC Andorra when we were still in the bottom playable tier of the Spanish leagues and we got Atletico Madrid in the cup and we got stuffed oh oh good block from the defender yeah we got stuffed 7-1 it was 7-1 was it 7 nil? it was probably 7 nil. it wasn't much fun Ooh, starting with us on the ball this could be interesting okay come on let's fire up for shot here someone Ooh. Salum get in oh Oh my god, we are... I don't know where this is coming from at the moment. We are the second half kings at this point. Which I said that now, we're probably going to lose 5-1. But, wow, what a goal, what a moment. Get in. Okay, here come Tunisia, 65 minutes. So they haven't roared back into this, and we've got a chance to add a second... Close. Close. Oof. Good. Good to see. We're time wasting. <laughs> A lot of time wasting here. Surprised he didn't get booked for that. Okay, Salom. Get in. Get in. What is going on this evening? Oh, we've won a tournament. We've won a trophy with Tanzania. And now we've just beaten Tunisia in a World Cup qualifying match. Unbelievable scenes in Dar es Salaam. Oh, come on. Come on. One minute to survive here. Oh. Graham. Tunisia. Uh, is this going to finish 2 2? Come on. Come on. We've, we've got to run the clock down here. Oh, no. We've got more highlights coming. Oh, don't do anything stupid here, boys. Oh, we've made our last substitution. Come on. 30 seconds to go. Come on, just hold on to the ball. Come on, you can do it. Yes. Mkude, come on, you've got a runner with you. Yes, come on, he's through. Oh, okay. 10 seconds, 15 seconds left. Oh, come on, referee. Oh, there we go. We've done it. Oh, a tense finish to the game. We've just beaten Chu Nizia.
Well, 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 what about that then? A massive victory against a team ranked about 100 places above us. It would still be a big ask to qualify as only the top side would advance and we had to play Nigeria, a high-flying La Gambia and Tunisia again, but away. And it was group leaders Nigeria up next. Could we somehow, somehow keep the dream alive? Anyway, Tanzania, Nigeria, World Cup qualifying action. Can we get another shock win today? But yeah, Ronaldo, I'm quite happy to see Ronaldo back. I did always sometimes wonder, because you know, when he left, I think, you know, he... He did talk about, you know, something about, you know, it'll always be a special club for me, down one nil down already, and I'd like to come back someday in the future. I did kind of get the feeling that he was being genuine about that, that he wasn't just saying it to kind of, you know, sweeten his way out. But um, yeah, good to see him back. Let's see how we go here. Nigeria on the attack again, so there's not going to be an early goal from us this time it's an early goal from nigeria instead <sighs> oh here we go come on oh what was the defender doing there gong indeed oh what was my defender doing oh so he controls it and then just forgets where the ball is <laughs> Man United have developed a bit of a habit for signing these players in their kind of mid to late 30s over the last few years because you had Ibrahimovic, of course. They've got Cavani already and Ronaldo now as well. And we're back in this game, potentially. Petria makes it 3-1. We could be in for an interesting finish. No, no further goals coming. It's going to finish 3-1. I mean, 3-1 against Nigeria, it's not, it's not an embarrassing defeat, is it? Especially with tiny Tanzania. Our luck ran out in the end. Sadly, defeat in that game ruled out the remote possibility of finishing top of the group and also meant, despite that brief high of the win over Tunisia, we would not be heading to the 2026 World Cup. There were still two games to go, though, both away from home. Would we be able to add anything to our points tally? So I'll show you the goal highlights from the Gambia game, because although it was a dead rubber and it took place off stream, there are some goals here worth a closer look. So we opened the scoring quite early on, some intricate passing. We found our way into the box and then pure comedy gold. Deflection off the defender, hit the post, off the back of the keeper's head. Lovely stuff. You love to see it, unless it happens to you. The lead didn't last long, though, as we gave away a stupid free kick, and Bojang got in there, who, the creator of Minecraft, I believe, to level up the scores 1-1. So Loom would once again be pivotal to our chances, as he put us 2-1 up with a perfectly placed header, and Ayuba Lagana would get in on the action too, not this time with the trademark Thunderbolt, but a more considered thinking man's goal, a beautifully placed shot that completely deceived the keeper who was no doubt expecting a netbuster. Youngster Mokake, after missing so many games through suspension and injury, celebrated his return to the squad by, well, getting himself sent off again. And then Gambia would pull one back to make it 3-2, but despite their desperation to run back to the centre circle, it was too little too late. But this win would prove to be our last major victory with the Tanzanians. A few days later, we travelled north and went down 4-0, with Tunisia very much gaining their revenge over us. And that meant that despite those two massive victories, we finished bottom of our group and a long way off ever qualifying. Our next competitive action came in the shape of AFCON qualifiers, but as you can see, we were in a really tough group. Coupled, of course, with a tough fixture list. I mean... Ghana first, then three away games on the trot. Didn't give us much cause for hope. And I was right to feel this way as it started off badly with a 5-1 defeat to Ghana and didn't get much better from there as we lost all six qualifying games. So the side that shocked Tunisia and the Gambia, the side that were the reigning Sisafa Cup champions, couldn't even get a point in this 
admittedly tough group. Faced with an aging squad and only a handful of players getting any kind of top level experience in Europe, and the prospect of the Sisafa Cup being the only competition we would ever stand a chance in, I started to look at the job market again. Sierra Leone almost enticed me. I do own a Sierra Leone shirt after all, but it would have meant a small step back in the world rankings. A move to Europe to coach Georgia was also tempting, but a constant cycle of only playing and losing qualifiers didn't seem the right way to go either. I therefore decided to wait until the new year and wait until the African Cup of Nations and the Asian Cup of Nations were over. Surely some jobs would come up after these tournaments. And indeed they did. A range of nations across both continents either sack their managers or let them step down. So we hit apply on a few jobs. And so with two firm offers on the table, we will do another little tease here. After almost seven years of the white sandy beaches of the Caribbean, the palm tree laden island shores of Oceania, and the beautiful coastline plus rolling plains of East Africa, we would be heading somewhere even hotter, considerably drier, and much more rugged and barren. Oh man. Please comment below if you got that one, and make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit like on the video, get the bell on, and notifications. Join me in the next episode to find out exactly where we ended up and what exciting new competition the International Manager of Mystery would be playing in. I'm Dodgy Gamer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon.